Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start to story. AITA for confronting my family about favoritism after they cancelled our dinner plans. I'm a 27-year-old man, the third of four siblings. I've always felt like the afterthought in my family. Lori 33F, Chuck 29M, and Jade 25F always got the first pick of everything from my parents while I was left with the scraps. I haven't received a birthday gift from any of them in about 10 years, yet I'm still expected to chip in for their group gifts every year. Last Friday, we had a family dinner that felt like a series of constant jabs at me. My siblings were bragging about all the stuff they've received from our parents that I never did. They talked about how nice their weddings were while brushing off the fact that my wife and I had a small, low-key wedding. My parents paid for all of their weddings but didn't help with mine because they were saving up for Jade's wedding. They also bragged about their minimal student loans, thanks to our parents' help. While they lived on campus at expensive four-year schools, I stayed home and attended a prestigious watchmaking school. I paid rent and covered my own tools while my parents spent between $120 in K and $150 in K on each of my siblings. I received $7 in K for tools, which they see as equivalent to what my siblings received. When I went back to school on my own, I didn't ask for any financial help and wasn't offered any either. But when my brother went back, they covered everything without him even asking. There were tons of little digs like comments about cars and lifestyle choices, but what really pushed me over the edge was Chuck and his wife bragging about their awesome marriage because they do spontaneous dates, like the one they had last Friday. It turns out the emergency my parents had, which led them to cancel our dinner plans, was actually just a dinner date for Chuck and his wife at Texas Roadhouse. I'd spent hours making my grandpa's ziti and meatballs with homemade marinara, which is my mom's favorite dish. I was beyond furious. Instead of screaming, I just got up and left without saying a word. My wife followed me. When my mom called later to ask why I left, I laid it all out, explaining the favoritism, the unfairness, and how it felt like they don't even care about me. I wasn't expecting an apology, just hoping she'd understand. Now Chuck and Lori are pissed at me, accusing me of ruining dinner, while my mom is upset, not because of what happened, but because I'm hurt. They're calling me immature for keeping score. Mini Update I'm not sure where the best place to put all this is, so I'm putting it here if that's okay. My first draft contained some of this info, but I had to edit a lot to get down to the character limit. Some of this has been shared in other comments, but I'm consolidating it here in hopes that it answers questions. There is no reason to believe I am not my father's child. The list of genetic coincidences necessary for that to be the case is long and not worth rehashing. He doesn't have any male relatives that could explain it either. He has one sibling, my aunt, and none of his cousins have ever been in his life or even remotely local. I look just like my paternal grandfather. I always have. He died when my father was young, but by all accounts, he was a good father and is remembered fondly. My younger sister has been the beneficiary of many, if not most, of the things my parents chose not to give me, but she did not ask for any of that and has been one of the only people consistently trying to make it right. I mean, for goodness sake, she was trying to fix it when she was six. She has definitely not seen everything, but what she has seen, she has tried to correct. She is perhaps guilty of assuming the best of people and not asking questions, but she isn't heartless, and getting angry at her isn't going to fix anything. We talked for a long time after I posted this. She had been told she was contributing to a birthday gift for me every year since at least 2018. She gave money to my older sister to buy my wife and me tickets to my favorite soccer team. And then when my wife and I inevitably posted about going to games, she assumed one of the games we went to each year was the gift she had been contributing money towards. There is a lot of backstory there, but the gist of it is Jade and I have always gotten along well, and Jade does not participate in singling me out negatively. She and her husband spend time with my wife and me frequently, usually just the four of us. I was definitely favored by my maternal grandfather growing up, but it's not like I got extra gifts or anything. He and I just have very similar personalities and that showed at a young age. I am on the spectrum, and I feel very strongly that were he my age, he'd have been diagnosed as well. We both struggle mightily with a lot of sensory things, but loud crowds and being surrounded by a lot of disparate sources of noise, like, perhaps, his loud Italian family, overwhelms both of us, so we'd often hide for at least some portion of all family gatherings. Over time we started hiding together by just leaving to play box or locking ourselves in the kitchen to cook, as an adult, he has made comments that indicate he sees that I'm not being given as much and in the last two to three years, he has definitely given more items to me than anyone else, 
Things he wants me specifically to have is slash when he passes and that he wants me to enjoy now. That was definitely a source of tension on Friday. He is quite wealthy, and my older siblings are accusing me of trying to enrich myself based on inheritance. I have no clue what his plans are, and I have not, and will never ask. It's not my business, and he has always had a pathological need to make things even everyone gets the same number of boxes at Christmas, with as near as possible the exact amount of money spent on each recipient, so I do not expect him to behave differently with his estate. I honestly expect that anything that doesn't go to charitable causes will be divided evenly, but I really, really think it's all going to charity. My paternal grandmother has openly favored me more and more as I've aged. Again, this is not financial, and to my knowledge, she isn't in a position to leave me an inheritance, not that I'd even ask that of her. There is an old clock of hers made by a local clockmaker, and housed in a handmade cabinet that I used to spend hours looking at when I was really young. She actually put multiple labels inside of it as early as when I was five or six, saying that it belongs to me. But I didn't ask for that. I appreciate it, and I will gladly accept it if she still feels that way when the time comes, but I don't spend the time I spend with her as some sort of plot to steal her clock. I just like hanging out with my Oma. She's a really funny lady, and she likes walking with my wife and me and our dogs. She stays with us in our house on holidays in lieu of staying in the guest house my parents had built for her. My siblings are under the impression that she has somehow supported me financially. Again, unless there is something I am not aware of, she is very much not in a position to do this. My wife and I will be meeting with my parents at some point over the next week to talk. I do not know what to expect, but I will be taking the time to write stuff down in preparation. I don't even know what I want from it, but I will be bringing up family therapy. Final Update about a week after that post, my wife and I sat down with my parents to clear the air. As several people suggested, I wrote down my thoughts and compiled to the best of my knowledge, a listing and full accounting of the disparity in what my siblings were given over the years versus what I was given. I actually did the math, and it turns out that while I was at the Technicum, I paid my parents more in rent than they ever paid for my tools. But the final reckoning showed that my parents gave between tilde $370 and K on the high end for J to tilde $190 and K on the low end for Chuck, to my siblings, amounts they never gave to me. Sitting down and seeing the full amount spelled out like that probably made me the angriest I've been during this whole mess. My parents had been aware there were discrepancies, but really pushed back on the actual amounts until we sat down and went through each major gift slash incident case by case. By the end, my dad admitted my reckoning was likely conservative. That more or less ended any productive talk that night. My dad just claimed they didn't think it had gotten that bad, but wouldn't give any details about how they could have possibly not noticed. In the interim, Chuck and Lori continued to escalate their anger, continuing to call and text me, my parents and extended family. I have not spoken to either of them directly since and don't expect to anytime soon. Roughly a week after that first sit-down, my mom and dad asked to meet again. Lots was said, but the gist is this, they felt I was doing well and didn't need their help. Basically, they thought I would be fine without them. They admitted they probably live outside their means and gave more to my older siblings than they should have and could never have given me that much. They claimed the timing of my wedding lined up with probably the most dire of their overspending slash lack of saving and that they literally did not have the funds to live up to their promise, especially as they were paying for Jade's tuition, car, and apartment at that time. They have offered money, they have offered to pay for vacations, a car, all kinds of stuff, but I think they don't really get it yet. My wife and I don't want their money, but we aren't really sure yet what an ideal resolution to this looks like. At least they have admitted they were unfair and are open to working things out. My wife and I spent Easter with Jade, her husband, and my grandparents. My mom and dad came over in the evening. This seems to be more or less the new normal for now. Thank you for listening to today's story. Have a nice day.